So let's help you hit great cross-court passing shots in singles. So let's watch this point in its entirety, and then we'll diagram it. So that was a great shot by Jeannie Bouchard right here. So here's the serve. Jeannie hits a weak return that barely goes over the net, and the opponent comes in, and she ends up hitting a slice approach shot. Now, the first thing is I'm a big fan of players attempting mostly down-the-line passing shots. So if you hit, for the rest of your life, every sh passing shot down the line, you'd be right, in my opinion, more often than you'd be wrong. But... The time, in my opinion, to go for the cross-court pass is right off of your opponent's approach. So let's say you hit the first ball right to her. She volleys it over the net. You come in. That's, without a doubt, the, a time to go down the line. The longer in the point your, you and your opponent are with them at the net, then most likely it's a down the line. But as your opponent is coming forward, there's going to be more room for the cross-court pass. And so let's specifically talk about the target area where Jeannie is trying to hit. When you hit a cross-court passing shot, you want to have the service box as your target, not no man's land, the area behind the service line. And the reason is because in order to hit the ball deep, the ball has to go too close to your opponent. The deeper your uh, passing shot, cross-court passing shot, the closer the ball has to travel to the opponent in order to get there. When you hit your cross-court passing shot, obviously we want to keep it away from them. We want to keep it away from the volleyer. And the best way to do that is actually to hit the ball so that it lands in the service box and is at a sharper angle. Let's look where her ball lands. It lands in the service box, lands in front of the service line. And I want you to notice that it goes over the corner. Look where it's landing for its second bounce. That's the second bounce. So finally, Jeannie wins the point on the second bounce, right? So notice it's going basically over the corner of the doubles court, which means because of where it landed initially, there's the first bounce, there's the second bounce. The ball is crossing the singles line right about there. First bounce, second bounce. So the ball is farther away from the volleyer. So the first thing you got to learn is when you go for a cross-court pass, what you're trying to do is actually hit the, a sharp angle that is away from the opponent that actually bounces in the service box because the deeper the ball lands, the closer it's going to travel to your opponent. Now, the next thing then is how do we do this? How do we get the ball to land in the service box on our opponent's approach shot with our cross-court pass? And I want you to notice Jeannie's finish. I want you to start hitting the vast majority of your cross-court passing shots with this reverse finish kind of buggy whip, as they call it. This is the like the Nadal finish, right? Where he finishes that way the majority of the time. This finish helps you impart more spin because you're swinging more vertically up the back of the ball. That's the whole point of it. So I want you to start hitting your cross-court passing shots slightly differently with a different technique than your down-the-line. Down-the-line passing shots can land short, they can land medium, they can land deep, because all three of those, the ball is the same distance from your opponent as it's traveling. But cross-court passing shots, when they land shorter and in the service box, they are absolutely sh uh, shorter, I'm sorry, farther away from your opponent than the uh, deep cross-court pass. So that's why we see her finishing up above her head. She knows that ne she needs to spin this ball in order to bring it down. See, if when you hit a cross-court passing shot, if you hit a cross-court pass and your ball lands in the doubles alley, you did not miss wide if you hit, let me state this again. If you hit a cross court passing shot and your ball lands in the doubles alley, the ball did not land wide because you didn't hit it wide of your target. You hit it long. 
the ball actually landed too long. You needed to bring it down sooner. If your ball lands, let's say, right there on the first shot and then lands there the next time you try it, when you were standing here hitting a cross-court pass, when it landed here, it landed shorter than when it landed here. It didn't. This one right here is not wide of your target. It's long of your target. So you have to be able to dip this ball with heavy spin into the service box to make that happen. So when your opponent comes up to the net on an approach, they're usually farther from the net. So it's actually a good time to go for that cross-court pass. But it's a great idea just to understand that the cross-court passing shot needs to land in the service box and closer to the side uh, T is ideal. That way it's really far away from the opponent. And the way that you're going to do that is you're going to spin up the back of the ball more, finishing up above your head the way we see with Genie here. And that's what's going to get that ball to land in the service box. Now, if you're looking for people in your local area to play against, practice with, or even find a coach who can help you with your game, use my link in the description, playyourcourt.com slash two-minute tennis. And when you use my link, you get 50% off when you join. So go out and work on your cross-court passing shot. Finish up above your head and get the ball to land in the service box. And if you do, there's no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2 You got this.